I always tell people that freelancing is like dating on Tinder. Clients are looking for someone and they're gonna probably swipe you away. They will judge you by your cover and you need to impress in a few seconds. I've spent a couple of years on Upwork and went from zero dollars to more than a hundred thousand dollars. The first job that I had was 30 bucks and the last one that I had was around six thousand dollars. If you want to ace it on Upwork and become a good freelancer, I'll be speaking about three things in this video. The boring basics, things you probably don't know, and things you definitely don't know. The process of working on Upwork is a lot different than when I applied to a couple of years ago. Hi, I'm Ellen Nani. I want to apply to your website as a business consultant. Oh, you would? It would be our absolute pleasure to have you on board. Welcome. Hello, I'm Alan Nani, and I would like to apply to Upwork as a graphic designer. Come on, we have a million of those. Go away. Go away. The boring basics. So you need to create a profile, and a very good one. The whole idea of a profile is to showcase who you are and whether you're a good match for the clients. It's the shirt you're wearing to a date, per se. So this is the most important thing of anything related to Upwork. Showcase your abilities, but remember, this is a sales game. So you're, at the end of the day, selling yourself. If you want a recipe of failure, just start and say, uh, my name is L, and I have 500 years of experience in development. Come on. Start different, catch their attention, and then provide what they want. Okay, you have a fantastic profile, and you want to apply for your jobs and start getting money, so what you do is you start applying, and these are called proposals. Now you're gonna explore what's out there and choose what you like and then apply with a proposal of yours. You know what's a great idea? Copying a perfect proposal and just pasting it on all applications for all the proposals there are. No, it's not. That is a very bad thing to do. A lot of people do that because I also hire an Upwork, so I see a lot of people who I know they're just sending templates of how great they are, which does not feel personalized and is a terrible thing to do. Then there are connects. Connects are like tokens. Remember when you used to go to the arcade as a young person and you used to need the small coins? That's it. Each proposal requires a specific number of connects, very similar to the arcade. You remember the cool games were the ones with a higher rate compared to the ones that no one wanted to play? Now here's how Upwork's algorithm works when it comes to connects. They place the jobs that you're most likely to accept. If a person has a hiring history, if a person looks legit, per se, they would put a high connect rate to this particular job. While if a new client just started an Upwork profile and didn't even verify his payment method and just wrote a bad job description, then you're going to probably notice that it has a lower connect rate for this particular job. Imagine this. If a random average freelancer in Upwork got Aladdin's lamp, and a genie pops out and asks for three wishes. A typical Upwork freelancer will not ask for money, and they will not ask for more clients. They will ask for the job success score. A good job success score is the most important and critical element of your Upwork profile. Screw up, and you're never going to be able to work again if you have a bad job success score. I mean, not, don't say never. You could remedy it, but it's just a huge amount of effort that you're going to have to do. This is particularly important for people who are very new and just had a job success score. Imagine how it works is it just it calculates. There is an equation. You can find it on their website. It just calculates the jobs you did right and the jobs you did wrong and then puts you a percentage out of 100. So imagine if you just started working on Upwork and bam, your first job was a screw up. Then what would happen? Then what clients usually look at after that is how much you earned to know how your performance is on Upwork. Because if you earned $100,000 compared to someone who didn't earn anything, it would be very likely that you would get hired. Ugh, the boring basics. There are two types of jobs, hourly and fixed. And that's very easy. To, I don't need to explain it. You just get paid per hour or you just get paid per project. Uh, Al, what if, what if I fight with a client? You want the short answer or the long answer? Short one, please. You're screwed. Disputes are almost a lose-lose for you as a freelancer, not as a client. You see, how it happens is, yes, you can get your money that you agreed on through a dispute and just say like, hey, this is unfair. I worked exactly how what I did and what he asked I provided, and he's asking for his money back, and I will not give him his money back. Upwork could go like, okay, you're right. Let's take the money. It's all yours. 
and then the client would be upset and then the client would give you feedback which is going to affect your job success so just don't fight be peaceful don't ever get into disputes now let's talk about the things you probably do not know while creating a new profile Upwork is going to ask for your skills and you could just write, I'm a graphic designer and they're probably going to say, we don't need graphic designers right now. Thank you. A good thing to do is to check their reports. They always provide a report each quarter on the most demanded skill. Now that doesn't guarantee that your profile is going to pass if you just write all those skills, but it would improve your odds. You also need to know how it looks like from a higher perspective, how you would rank amongst all the others and what makes the people look into your profile immediately or just skip you. I've been contacted by a lot of people due to my experience in Upwork that wanted to start a new Upwork profile. And whilst they were creating their profile, they asked me, does this picture look okay? And it was them on a white background with a tux. It's called the CV picture. In Upwork, it's called the CU picture, since you're never going to get any job with that picture. When clients are looking for new freelancers to work with them, they will look at the image. That's the first thing they will look at. And an image with a person with good color psychology, with a good background, happy, instead of just, you know, with a suit and all serious, is probably going to lead them to hire that person. What I did was I got a professional photographer to take a good picture of me so that I wouldn't have to worry about a good profile picture that would lure them in. Now, once they're in my profile, they might look at something that a lot of people don't exert good time in, which is your video. You'll see that I also invested in a good photographer to do such a video of me because at the end of the day, they need to see how I speak. They need to, to feel comfortable working with me. And that's the only thing they would want to do at the end of the day. They want to feel comfortable to work with you as a freelancer. If you scroll down to your profile, you're going to find that there are portfolio elements that, that clients are probably going to look into. Again, remember that they are in the process of choosing from the many people that they have in open tabs. So your portfolio should immediately grasp their attention. And that's why that thumbnail is very important. Consider purchasing a mock-up or something that would make it stand out in front of all the others. Congratulations, you're now hired. What should you do in terms of guaranteeing that clients would not screw you over? Now, I had a huge catastrophe with Upwork and I'll speak about this in another video. I have an article a bit, but that's not what we're talking about. Upwork will always push you to record your hours using their software so that you would fall under the hourly protection. This hourly protection guarantees that you would get your money from Upwork regardless of what's happening with the client, with the bank, or whatever there is. Although, due to my stressful situation with Upwork, I figured out that this hourly protection is actually limited to a specific maximum. After that, you're on your own. Why am I even saying that? It doesn't make sense. So what if the client pays and you get the money from Upwork, then where is the problem? Problem, my friend, and something called chargebacks. You don't want to hear about that. I'm not even going to talk about it in this video, but they're allowed to just cancel their Upwork account, go to their bank and say, we never did this before and I want to charge back at this amount. Here's something to be very aware of. How fast do clients hire freelancers? Very fast. Usually, I never apply for a job that has been posted more than six hours ago. So let's say you love this job and you know you're going to be perfect at it and you just wish if you knew more about this client. Here's what you probably don't know. What you should do is you should look into the job post and you'll see the feedback provided by other freelancers for this particular client and you might be lucky enough to see the name, the company they worked on and more details that would help you to build your cover letter. Now here's what a lot of people probably don't know. Let's say you did a job and the client was not satisfied with the result and it ended and you received the worst feedback in the world. One star review, the worst freelancer I ever worked with and I'll never work with this freelancer again and you just feel disappointed and you don't know what to do. I tried but Upwork didn't work out, that's it. I have a bad feedback. Al, everyone is gonna see this. I am screwed for life. No, you're not. Here's a tip. Return the money. If you provide this client with a full refund, he or she are not allowed to give you feedback because they haven't paid for it. 
However, this doesn't change the fact that it will affect your drop off processes. Additionally, there is a feature that was launched maybe one or two years ago called Project Catalog. I highly advise you to do it. It's, it's what I would call the Fiverr alternative. What they're trying to do is they notice that Fiverr are gaining a lot of popularity with what they're doing and they want a product that looks like it. So this is exactly what this project catalog is all about. It's the Fiverr alternative. The good thing about it is it saves a little bit of time. Clients come and they know your average pricing. They know everything about it and they just, you know, immediately get to talking about the project. Now here's things you definitely don't know. I will give you 50 bucks if you know any of those things. Per item. I'm joking. Or am I? I am. It's joking. The Upwork job notifier. Dun -dun -dun. I told you that clients want to hire and they want to hire quickly. So you need to know when this client is out there writing, uh, I want a graphic designer who would do this in 24 hours. Enter. The moment this client presses enter, you need to see it. And how you would do it is with a small plugin. I've used that one. You can use something else. It's solely up to you. Thank you for the developer who created it in the first place. It helped me for over two years. This is also one of my favorites. So let's say you do a great job for a client and you get a five star rating, but that client was not in a writing mood. So they didn't write, oh, you're the best. They just gave you a five star rating and closed the contract. Are you happy? You should be. Woohoo. No. -ho. According to one of the customer support agents that I talked to, if a client just gives you a five star without writing a lot about you, then this will affect your job success score negatively rather than positively. It doesn't make sense. Okay, Al, I will start and I will put my rates as low so that people would start hiring me and I would increase my job success score in time. Is that smart? Not necessarily, no. You see, clients are looking for a specific service and a lot of clients are looking for a high quality service. And if they want a good blog post, for example, and you're offering it at five bucks, chances are they know your quality is not that good. Hence, they would not hire you. But you have better odds of explaining yourself if you have a good fair budget that showcases your quality. And at the end of the day, it's all about the previous works you've done and your contact with the client. I've written an article before about how to write the killer cover letter, what is right to do and what is wrong to do. I remember a while back when I started working on Upwork, well, I was a foolish kid and what I did was I just wrote a one cover letter that is so good and just sent it to a million jobs, 30 to be specific. A few hours later, Upwork sends me an email telling me they don't want me anymore, that you should go away and we never need your services again, ever. After all these years, my best cover letter, I'm Alanani. I've checked your company, Space Y. Here's more information about what I do on my website. Thanks. That's it. You see, if all the freelancers are writing paragraphs and paragraphs about how awesome they are, it's also sometimes a good idea to just write a few words to, you know, break the norm. Okay, but that's not enough. I got you. Here's what you could do. You can create your own website and put all the creativity that you want there. I would advise you on buying a template from a website like Creative Market or Graphics River and just put everything you want to say there and you can show it differently than how they would display it on Upwork in the cover letter. This would be perfect as long as you would remember not to put contact information on this website. It's against Upwork's rules. Okay, so what Upwork really cares about is that they want everyone to be happy. Except the freelancers. Partially kidding. Upwork cares about the client. It's very obvious. They're the people with the wallets. And they're the most important aspect or the most important piece of the puzzle. And that's what they think. Because at the end of the day, there are millions of freelancers who want work. And not so many who want to pay for work. One of the things that Upwork care about more than anything in the world is making sure that you do, do not, not get, get paid, paid outside, outside of, of, of Upwork. Don't. They're gonna know. The last thing is you need to know what clients really need. What clients really need is different based on the client. Some clients want something done in a quick time. Others want it in a very good quality. Some would want a very long-term collaboration. So you need to fully understand what the client wants in order to do the right pitch. You might produce fantastic work, 
but a client would want something done in 24 hours, which is something you're incapable of doing because of your agenda. Hence, you should not go for it. And that's why you should learn when to accept jobs and when to not accept jobs. So these are the things you definitely don't know. Do I owe you $50? Two pieces of advice before I leave you off. Number one, don't throw all your cards in the same freelancing game. I've been doing this for quite a while and don't rely on Upwork. Don't rely on Fiverr. Don't rely on Medium, TopTal, whatever it is. Don't give it 100% of your attention. Diversify your freelancing. That's the only way you can guarantee success on the long term. You might be thinking that, oh, I'm going to get on Upwork just to make an extra income on the side. So what you really want from Upwork at the end of the day is money. Even if you think that, that's not what you're going to gain. What you're going to gain is knowing how to pitch for clients, knowing how to showcase yourself, knowing how to say yes and how to say no, and knowing how to be the perfect salesperson. This is all going to lead you to the same conclusion that I reached, which is Upwork and all those freelancing websites are merely channels to what you can provide. After you do this, after years of experience, you could do this on LinkedIn, you could do this on Facebook, whatever you want to do, you can provide your services as long as you know how to deal with people, how to deal with clients, how to deal with the whole platform and payments and everything around that, then you're good to go. If you have any questions about Upwork, please shoot it in the comments and I'll answer it for everyone to see. Finally, um, subscribe or like this uh, video. I said it, yeah. Truth is, I really need your assurance that this is what you're looking for, or that you like this video and this video provided you with value that you can use so that I would create more videos like that. So if that's the case, do it. Do it. Whatever you do, don't forget to have a good day.